إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسولا فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر أمور محتثاتها وكل محتثات بدع وكل بدع ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها المؤمنون that verily it is always beneficial to take the opportunity whenever that opportunity presents itself to advise one another with the fear and dutifulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is upon all of us as believers, collectively as well as individually, to fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala as He should be feared. And this can only be achieved by doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, hoping for His reward, and staying away from His prohibition, fearing His punishment. Ayyuhal mu'minun, verily Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Qur'an, وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَأَكْثَرِ النَّاسِ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Likewise, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says, وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ أيها المؤمن, in these ayat, and other than them, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned that verily the hour will be established and the hour is coming and there is no doubt in that. So it is binding upon every believer to believe in this event, which is that of the establishment of the hour, the last hour, or that of that of the affairs of the hereafter. And today we would like to expand and reflect upon a particular narration that I believe fits many of us. And that is the hadith which is found in Bukhari wa Muslim on the authority of Anas ibn Malik. And the Rajul and Sala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa fi love. And the Arabi jaa ila Nabi or jaa Arabi ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here we'd like to take a pause in a moment and break it down point by point. First, we like to look at this characteristic of this man, radiyallahu an, and that Anis, radiyallahu an, has mentioned that he was an Arab, and those were the individuals who lived in the desert or away from the cities, and only came to the cities for need. So it is rare that you would find an Arab mixed up in the cities with the companions. But we see that this man, radiallahu an, had a need, and it was a question. But why do we say that this hadith might be particularly good for us to benefit from? 
is because even though we do not live in the desert or outside of the city, that many of us have the description what the scholars mentioned that the Arab had, which was hard hearts, which was being away from knowledge and being away from the people of good, that many of us are removed and taken away from mixing with the people of good, just like the Arab war. Many of us are ignorant of the religion, just like the Arab war. And many of us, our hearts are hardened like stones, if not worse, just like the Arab war. But yet we will see that this Arabi benefited. Not only did he benefit in it himself, he benefited all of us for the one whom Allah Ta'ala has mercy upon. So here, when we read a hadith, Ja Arabi, or an Arabi did this, put yourself in his shoes, because more than likely, we have the similar descriptions of that person. But look how he benefited from the Prophet, and look how we benefit from the Prophet. Look how he was turned by the Prophet, and look how we are turned. So that we may emulate that benefit as that man or as this man particular benefited from the Prophet. Alayhi salatu was salam. Our second point, which we want to highlight before moving on, is the point that Anas ibn Malik said, and a rajulan sala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this man came to the Prophet because he had a question in his religion. He turned back to the Prophet to get clarity in a particular point in the religion. But where do we turn to when we have a problem in our deen? Some of us turn away and the last stop is the stop of the sunnah. But rather we rather look on what is YouTube and Twitter and Facebook before we look into the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. We might even take a kafir's word over that of dealing with the religion then go to the Prophet. But this Arabi, he had a question in his deen. So where did he go? He went to the Prophet Now obviously, we cannot return back to the Prophet physically. But because of the great Imams, Starting with the companions, then those who followed them and them. We see that the sunnah of the Prophet is preserved, just as if we were with the Prophet ﷺ. So we know what he said, what he did, what he accepted, what he rejected, even though it is 1400 years. So Ayyuhal Mukmin, ask ourselves, ask ourselves, with our hard hearts, with our ignorance, with our being away from the people of good, that where do we return back to when we have a problem in our religion? Where do we return back to? Do we return back to the Prophet like this Arabi? Or do we remain in the wind, hoping and, 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 and wanting somebody by looking on Twitter or an influencer or whatever? Whatever is popular nowadays. So here he comes and he says, "Anna rajulan sala Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam meta saa." When is the hour? When will this hour that we have no doubt in? Because Allah says, "La raiba fiha." There is no doubt in it. This Arabi wanted clarity. When is the hour? When will this hour be established? And this is similar to the ayah where Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, He says, يَسْأَلُوكَ nas and sa That the people ask you about the hour. يَسْأَلُونَكَ nas and sa قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا إِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ قَرِيبًا Inna Allah 
خالدين فيها لا يجدون فيها وليا ولا نصيرا that here the people ask about the hour say only Allah has knowledge of it but maybe it is close so ayyuha al-mukmin nisa'rabi knowing without a shadow of a doubt his aqidah is sahiha his aqidah is correct but he wants to know when will this hour be established when will this time come when I will go back and meet Allah when will this time come when I will be placed in my grave he wanted clarity but look what the Prophet ﷺ replied with مَا أَعْدَدْتَ لَهَا مَا أَعْدَدْتَ لَهَا What have you done to prepare? What have you done to prepare for this moment? For this reality which has no doubt? And some of the scholars have mentioned to give a highlighting point in understanding this is as if a man came and he said Hey people, listen up. You got a group of people waiting to come destroy you. That they are definitely coming to wreck you. That they say that there are two categories of people and you must reflect and ask ourselves sincerely inside of our hearts, which ones are we? The first group of people are the people who come and say, well, when are they going to get here? When will they arrive? What time, what day, what month? Okay, they're there. They're going to do this thing. But when? But then you have the group of people who immediately prepare. They immediately prepare. They say, you got a group of people waiting to destroy us. What do I have to do to prepare for it? Which group do we want to be from? The one who asks when? Or the one who is prepared when it happens? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has the ability to do all things to make us from those who prepare. Because here the question is a way of teaching and highlighting and reflection. Ma a'adadta laha. What have you done to prepare? So here this A'rabi. He says, Ma a'adadta laha. Fi narration in one narration. And he says, in another narration, That here he says, in one narration in Bukhari, that I have not prepared with a lot of praying with a lot of fasting, and nor with a lot of charity. And in another narration that is in Muslim, that I have not prepared, I have not prepared with a lot of things that I can be proud of, that I am happy with. He knew that he was short. He knew that he had shortcomings. But here a point, ayyuh al-mu'minun, this sahabi, this Arabi, do not think for a moment that he abandoned in his salat, his five obligatory salat. Nor think for a moment that he abandoned in fasting the blessed month of Ramadan. Nor think for a moment that he abandoned giving his obligatory charity. But rather, he fell short in the nawafil. He fell short in performing extra. So here he realized that he could not pray the prayer of Uthman. Uthman, alayhi Allahu an, that it is authentically mentioned that he performed witr and recited the whole Quran. La ilaha illallah. That this Sahabi, Uthman ibn Affan, authentically reported that he recited the whole Quran in one rakat. When's the last time we opened up the Quran? When's the last time we read a page in the Quran? When's the last time we finished the Quran? 
But yet we know we can't be Uthman. We cannot do that act as Uthman did. This Sahabi, this Arabi, knew he didn't have the fasting of Abu Darda, where he would fast a day and break his fast a day. He would fast a half a year. He fasted a half a year. This Arabi knew he couldn't do that. So he didn't prepare with prayer, non obligatory prayer. He did not prepare with extra fasting. Nor did he prepare, prepare with a lot of charity. As the Prophet asked Abu Bakr, Ma tarakta li ahlik. What did you leave for your family? What did you leave for your family? Taraktullah wa Rasul. He gave all his wealth. But yet when it comes to us, we fall short. We complain when we have to give to the masjid a dollar or five dollars to keep electricity on, to keep the heaters running, to keep the water flowing. And then they complain when there's no water, when there's no heat, and when there's no electricity. Abu Bakr gave all his money, where Umar gave half of his money when the Prophet ﷺ said, Give. We say give, it's called begging. We say give to the masjid to keep power, electricity. Oh, they're begging again. Then when the masjid is closed, oh, they don't have a masjid. Complaints upon complaints. That does not benefit the believer in this life, nor in the next. Ayyuh al-mu'minun. That this Arabi, he did not have a lot of non-obligatory acts of worship. That he can go meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he himself, this Arabi, he himself was not happy with. He was not happy that he didn't have the prayer of Uthman ibn Affan nor the fasting of Abu Darda, nor the sadaqah of Abu Bakr. Min kathirin ahmadu alayhi nafsi. I don't have a lot of good deeds that I, I, that I wish I cannot praise myself about, that I am not pleased with. Likewise us. We are in the same category, a majority of us, except from whom Allah has mercy upon But we fall into a danger where we abandon our prayers, our obligatory prayers. We abandon our obligatory fasting and we give up sadaqah altogether. That verily Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He even takes mention, that verily He takes mention that He is most pleased or most loving to the servant when he does. Or taqarrab ilayya abdi bima iftaradtu alay. That verily he loves the servant the most when he does the obligatory acts. Wala yazalu taqarrabu ilayya bin nawafil hatta uhibba. And that he keeps on becoming closer to me, being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his non-obligatory, until I love him. So here the one who thinks that if you abandon the obligatory, your five obligatory, your Ramadan, or whatever else is obligatory, and thinking that you can implement this hadith, you're mistaken, as we will come to highlight in a moment. So here this Sahabi, Radiallahu an this Arabi, radiallahu an. He recognized and realized, I don't have a lot of good extra deeds. I don't have a lot of good extra deeds that I can say that I'm proud of. Walakinni, he continues, Uhibbullah wa Rasulu, subhanallah. But I love Allah and His Messenger. I love Allah and His Messenger. Without a doubt, we will come, every last one of us, and say, I love Allah and His Messenger. But how can our love of Allah and His Messenger be similar to the love of this Arabi? 
This Arabi, that barely he lived away from the Prophet. And he comes and says, look, not a lot of prayer. Not a lot of non-obligatory prayer. Not a lot of fasting. Not a lot of charity. But I love Allah and His Messenger. That here, upon hearing this, Anas radiallahu an, that he continued after what the Prophet والسلام, said to this Arabi, that barely after this Arabi acknowledged that he loved Allah and his messenger, the Prophet والسلام, he says, Anta ma'a man ahbabta. Anta ma'a man ahbabta. That you will be with the one you love. That you will be with the one you love. But ayyuh al-mu'min, do not be mistaken. That just mere love will make you with those individuals that you love. Because we all say we love Allah and His Messenger. But how is it similar to this Arabi? So does that mean if I just say I love Allah and His Messenger, that verily I will be with the ones I love? That no. As Qadi Iyad, he mentions in his explanation of the hadith found in Sahih Muslim on Imam Nawawi, that verily what means and summarized that the reality of love is following the Prophet and staying away from opposing him. Following the legislation and staying away from opposing. Doing what Allah commands and his Prophet and staying away from what opposing, just as Allah Taala He says, "Woman, you tell wa Rasul, pay attention that those who obey Allah and His Messenger, not mere love, not mere love that's in the heart, but it is manifested and it is expressed by the tongue and the actions. It is manifested and it is." Uh, expressed with tongue and action. مَنْ يُتِيَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنَمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ That those are the ones, those people are the ones that Allah will favor and they will be with the prophets. وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنُوا that they will be with those righteous people in the hereafter. But with what condition? Mere love with the obedience of Allah and His Messenger. With the obedience of Allah and His Messenger. Not just saying, I love. How many people make a claim that is false? How many people make a claim that is no fact behind it? So here, for the Prophet that verily Anis radiallahu an he says, فَمَا رَأَيْتْ فَرِهَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بَعْدِ Islam. Pay attention to this statement as we will also add to it. That I have not seen the joy for the Muslims after their entrance to Islam, after they were guided to Islam, the most thing that made the Muslim the happiest, that they were guided to Islam. Bad the Islam min hadha. Al bi hadha. With what? The statement of the Prophet. Anta ma'amen ababd. So that they were so happy. They were so happy that man, I fall short in my prayers. I fall sh- in my non-obligatory prayers. I fall short in my fasting. But if I actualize this love in my heart, which will be manifested in my actions, which will be expressed with my tongue, that I will be with who I love. That they were n- there is nothing that made them more happy after their guidance to Islam. And then look what Anas, and we all know who Anas is. 
We all know who Anas ibn Malik is. That he served the Prophet for 10 years. He was under the wing of the Prophet for 10 years. He came from those who narrated abundance of a hadith on the Prophet. That there is not a time that his name is mentioned except radiallahu Allah is pleased with him. That he says, فَمَا فَرِحَ فَمَا مَا طَيِّبْ فَمَا فَرَحْنَا بِشَيْءٍ فَرَحْنَا بِقَوْلِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْتَ مَعْ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ فَأَنَا Meaning Anas, not Anas me, Anas ibn Malik, the companion. فَأَنَا أُرْجُوا أَكُونْ مَاهُمْ فَأَنَا أُحِبُّ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأبا بكر وعمر وأرجو أكون معهم بحب إياهم So Anas ibn Malik He said So I love the Prophet And I love Abu Bakr And I love Umar And Imam Bukhari رحمه الله He made this chapter Over this hadith المناقب Umar ibn al-Khattab the virtues of Umar ibn al-Khattab, that even having love for Umar, Abu Bakr, even Anas ibn Malik, that you will be with those whom you love. That I hope I will be with them for the love I have for them. So ask yourself, Ayyuhal Mu'min. Ask yourself, Ayyuhal Mu'min. Is there any narration? whether it be fabricated, authentic, or weak, that we have that Anas left off praying, that Anas left off fasting, that Anas left off charity, because we come to some Muslims and say, Muslim, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the action what you are doing is not good, it is forbidden, it is this. They say, Aki, I love Allah and His Messenger, subhanAllah. Like that's going to help you in the hereafter. But now is your love like that of the love of this Arabi? And oh hip Allah wa Rasulah. I love Allah and His Messenger. Why? Why did the Prophet وسلم, because he continued. He didn't disobey. He yatamasik bi sunnah wa Islam. He adhered it and held fast to Islam and the Sunnah. Whereas us, we just say I love and we think we're good. I love Allah, I love the sunnah, I love this. Not an iota of signature or sign of Islam or sunnah. So we have to ask ourselves, what is it that we love? What is it that we love? Not with our tongue, but with our hearts. What is it that we love with our hearts? As this companion loved with his heart, his tongue, and his actions. So ayyuhal mu'min. Ja'a Rabi. This is as if. That we came to the Prophet. We came to the Prophet. Because why? Our hearts are hard. Our hearts are hard. Our level of ignorance. Cannot be comprehended in this day and time. And we are so far removed. From the people of good. The people are good are being shrunk less and less and less. So yes, we come to the Prophet. But we have to ask ourselves, what have we prepared? What have we prepared for that hour when it will be established? What have we prepared when we are placed in that grave? What have we prepared when we will be resurrected? When Allah yabathu man fi al-qubur. That Allah will resurrect those who are in the grave. What have we prepared? That we might not have the prayer. We might not have the fasting. We might not have the charity. But as long as we maintain that love. And we will discuss this in the second khutbah. As long as we maintain that love of Allah and His Messenger, 
that we say this statement of uh, uh, of Anas ibn Malik, Arju akun ma'hum bi hubbi iyahum. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا في كما يحبنا وكما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد أيها المؤمنون as a Muslim and hearing these particular narrations, we have to return back to what the ulama have mentioned so that we may implement and practice these narrations as they should be practiced. Based upon principle, based upon knowledge, based upon certainty and clarity, not based upon emotion, nor based upon speculation or misconception, We have to have a scale. We have to have a scale that can determine are we loving Allah and His Messenger as this A'rabi, as Anas hopes that He will be with them with His love. Is our love the reality just as their love was? Or at least close to it? Because here we mention that Anas Muslimun. After hearing this statement of the Prophet, they were happy. They were happy, excited. But some of us need to be scared. Some of us need to be frightened. Because maybe our love that we claim with our tongues is not like the love that these companions are happy about. But what is our scale that we can use? We have an eye that Allah gives us. Allah makes it clear. Allah has given us the scale to determine whether that we have that love, like that Arabi, like Anas ibn Malik, like the rest of the companions. That verily, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He says, وَقُولْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاءَكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَإِخْوَانَكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجَكُمْ وَأَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالُ قَتَرَفْتَمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَقْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنَا تَرْدَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ كُوْ إِنْ كَانَ أَبَاءُكُمْ وَأَبَنَاءَكُمْ وَإِخْوَانَكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجِكُمْ That if your parents, your children, your brothers, your wives, وَأَمْوَالُقَتَ رُفْتُمُوهَا That that money, أَيُّهَا mu'minun, We have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this money. How are we achieving it and how are we acquiring it? That some of our brothers from the Muslims who have these stores, who have these shops, have to fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala with that money. Selling that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. Making business with the people or in a manner that Allah ta'ala hates. وَتِجَارَةٍ تَقْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا Aiding the people upon sin and transgression by selling sajara, cigarettes and uh, the other, the blunts and the things of this nature. We need to fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this isn't their problem. This is our problem as Muslims. But yet, it's makruh. Akhi fear Allah, it's makruh. 
rolls off the tongue with ease. It's only dislike, no problem. And shadakum billah, wa asalakum billah. If we had grapes, which are mubah, no doubt. But then, vodka or gin, whatever comes and says, look, we're going to give you millions to exclusively sell your grapes to us so that we can produce wine. Is that halal? Is that makroh? Is that disliked? La, it's haram. So you sell a blunt to a young man, knowing that he's not smoking that cigar, but what he puts in it. What he puts in it. Is that makroh? Is that disliked or is that haram? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. Is this part of it? Because that's not what Allah says. That money that you accumulate and that business you fear that will go away. Pennies on a dollar for a cigarette. But look at the sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pennies on a dollar for a blunt. But look at the sin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we love Allah and His Messenger as that Arabi? Do we love Allah and His Messenger like Anas ibn Malik? But yet we fall short. No problem. Because we have tawbah and istighfar. Call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa inni laghaffar. Verily I am the all forgiving, that I forgive. Liman taba wa amana wa amila saliha thumahtada. For the one who seeks repentance, the one who believes, the one who does righteous good deeds, thumahtada, as the mufassirun, they say that they remain upon sirat al mustaqim. We all swerve. And don't think for a moment that me standing here makes me better than anybody. I have the shortcomings. I fall short. But it's the reminder that benefits the believer. And I ask Allah to make us from the believer so that we may believe, uh, so that we may repent and seek istighfar and be with those whom we love. For verily Allah, He continues, وَمَسَاكِنُوا تَرْدَوْنَهَا And you're living where you live, your houses, and you're pleased with them. That you're pleased with your houses. أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ More beloved to you. More beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger. Meaning that you will go into sin to acquire those things. When Allah says haram, haram. When the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says haram, haram. Zuyina linnas hubbu shahawati min al nisai wa banin. Wa qanatiri muqantarati min al dhabi wal fidda. Wa khayl al musawamati wal anami wal harf. Thalika mata wal hayat al dunya. Wallahu induhu husnu maab. Zuyina. That it is beautified women, children, the desire, it is beautified the desire of women and children and wealth, gold and silver and horses, but we're looking at it like cars. Well, and am wa hearth, agriculture. But what is it with Allah? This is just the, the joys of this life. But what Allah has is much better. Should I not inform you what is better than that? That should I not give you the information which is better than wealth, than beautiful women, than children, than this and that, whatever it be from the dunya. جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْحَارِ 
وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَرِدْوَانٌ مِنَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Jannat, paradise, pure wives, and the pleasure and happiness from Allah. For who? الَّذِينَ قَالْ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا ذَابِ النَّارِ Those who say, O oh our Lord, Rabbana, we believed, so forgive us of our sins and protect us from the hellfire. الصابرين الصادقين قانتين منفقين ومستغفرين بالأسحار What's their description? The patient, the truthful, the obedient, the givers, those who give charity, وَمُسْتَغْفِرِينَ بِالْأَسْحَارِ Those who are seeking forgiveness before Fajr. أَيُّهَا mukmin, What do we love? What will we be with? When the Prophet والسلام, said, أَنْتَ مَعْ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ You are with those who love or with whom you love. Do we love Allah and His Messenger? Ask ourselves, do we love Allah and His Messenger? And know that here, just as the Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا إِلْمُهَا إِنَّ Allah, Only Allah knows when that hour will be established. That means we still have time. If it is not right now, we still have time. We still have time for istighfar. We still have time for toba. We still have time for righteous good deeds to prove not to anybody but ourselves that we love Allah and His Messenger. So ayyuhal mu'minun, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower, shower us with His mercy and to accept our, par, uh, to accept our repentance and our, our, our seeking forgiveness from Him alone with our partner and to protect us from every trial and tribulation that which is apparent and hidden.